What's up guys, how are you doing? Ghost here, back with another Jet tutorial. This has been frequently requested since I made the previous one on speed control. So today I'm going to be giving you guys a few tips and tricks on loadouts, my setup, my mouse sensitivity, and all that good stuff. So I'm going to start here by sharing my setup with you guys, what key bindings I use, my mouse sensitivity, and that sort of thing. Somebody requested this over on Pixel Enemy, so... That person who requested it, thanks for reminding me, that's something I need to show you guys. You're going to head over to Options, go in Key Bindings, click on Inject, and then you're going to scroll down and find Pitch Up. And I like to bind this to Spacebar. It is, of course, on my mouse there, as you can see, the uh, zero Y axis there. But it's very, very handy, especially if you're playing on PC, to have this bound to Mouse Up. And the reason for that is because otherwise... If you're doing a loop, no matter the direction of the loop, you're going to constantly be moving the mouse across the mouse pad. And that is something that's really exhausting for anyone. People who are playing on console, it's not really as big of a deal because all you have to do is hold the thumbstick in one direction the whole time. It's not really too strenuous on your hands. But for PC players, you definitely want to be using this keybind. So moving on to sensitivities here, you can see I have my mouse sensitivity set to 15% and my vehicle sensitivity at 20%. As for my mouse's sensitivity, I am actually using the Razer Death Adder, and it comes with a program called Razer Synapse, where you can manually set the DPI of the mouse within Windows. I have that set to 1600 DPI, and I also have any mouse acceleration within Windows disabled. Now, one final key binding, again, for the PC users. Sorry, console guys, I know you can't really bind any keys. Uh, this is going to be to toggle the full screen map, and I like to bind this to tab. So it's nice and close to my left hand, and you'll see me in the background footage here flipping my map on and off all of the time. And this is so I can check out and get an overview of the entire battlefield. I can find out where enemy vehicles are, and I can decide what my next target is going to be. And at the end of the day, tab only acts as the scoreboard, and it's less than vital that you need to see the scoreboard and have it easily accessible in-game anyway, right? So that's why I like to use that key for my map, and I'll just go ahead and bind the scoreboard to M instead. So with that said, let's take a little look at the heads-up display for the jet here. Some people ask questions about this, where their speed was, how they could see that in the last video. Uh, they also said that they complained a little bit about the visibility of the hood, and it was a little bit opaque. When you fly towards the sun, as you can see right there, you really can't see anything at all, and I have to agree with them. It is kind of annoying that you just really can't see your speed at all. But you can also use this to your advantage, especially when you're in a dogfight. If somebody's on your tail, you can actually fly straight towards the sun, and he's not going to be able to see his crosshair or his aiming reticle, and he's going to find it pretty difficult to actually shoot you. So moving on to the heads-up display, up in the top left, you can see a little yellow box there with a number in it. That is your speedometer. That is probably the most important thing on your entire heads-up display, so you definitely want to keep an eye on that one. Over to the right, you have another box which looks exactly the same as your speedometer, and this is actually your altitude gauge, so this will show you how many meters you are from ground level. Now hopefully, if you're going to hit the floor, you're going to be able to see that without having to look at your altitude meter over there, but it can be useful for stopping hitting the ceilings on some of the maps. If you don't know this, all of the maps have a certain flight ceiling, and it varies from map to map. And what happens when you get stuck in the flight ceiling is you can't turn the jet, you can't accelerate, and you essentially just end up being stuck there for around a minute before you can get out of there. And I can't really tell you the flight ceilings of all the maps off the top of my head, but it's a good idea sometimes, if you happen to know them, to just keep an eye on your altitude meter there if you're going to be flying high. Now above that, we have your heading, which essentially acts as a compass. So 0 is north, 90 degrees will be east, 180 will be south, and 270 will be west. Again, this is kind of just for show. It's not particularly useful, not something I use a great deal. But I suppose if you hear a call out on the radio, you know, like, oh, there's a sniper to the west. If you see on your heading there, you're heading in the uh, west direction, you can maybe see if he's spotted and try and take him out on the way. Down at the bottom there, underneath the crosshair, there are another series of arrows in a little arc with an arrow underneath, and that will actually show you the tilt of your jet. Again, just for show, pretty much not too important. Now, to the right of your crosshair, it says ECM ready there, and that is actually really important, because when you use your ECM, 
it will actually show you the cooldown. And the same goes for flares, by the way. So it will show you the cooldown for whatever countermeasure you're using there. So you can actually see exactly when it's going to be ready again. That is actually one of the most useful parts of the hood. I use that quite often. Now, right in the middle, that is where you have your crosshairs. And obviously, this is what you use to aim at enemy targets. Now, these can be a little bit confusing. They change from jet to jet and from weapon to weapon. But in this case, in the attacher with the 30mm cannons, there is a tiny little dot in the middle. In fact, it's probably so small that in the video, you may not even be able to see it. But it, it's seriously, like, tiny. Sometimes in-game, I can't even see it. That is where your cannon fire is actually going. And the little cross there with the dot is where it's sort of predicted to land. So based on the altitude of your jet, based on your speed, based on certain vectors, you know, if you're doing some kind of crazy maneuver, you're at high speed doing a turn, you'll notice that that crosshair will drift very far away from the middle of the screen there, and it's going to be much harder to actually aim with your cannons. But the little crosshair is essentially what you want to use to aim at the enemy jet. So you really want that crosshair on top of the jet when you shoot with your cannons, and the theory is that if you have that crosshair on your target when you shoot with the cannons, you will actually hit the target and the HUD will actually do the compensating for you. But of course, this depends on other factors like distance as well as speed. I have a lot more tips for actually aiming in the jet because it is a bit of a unique skill that you have to learn, but I'm going to save that one for another video. One final thing I would like to say on the HUD is in the bottom left, you of course have your minimap, but when you're in the jet or a helicopter for that matter, it will actually turn into an air radar and you can see any enemy jet or helicopter unless they have their ECM popped on the air radar at all times. And you are going to be wanting to watch that thing like a hawk. It is going to be pretty much your number one warning system that an enemy jet is trying to engage you in a dogfight. Alright guys, so I thought you might be interested in seeing my loadout, knowing my thoughts on all the different weapons and gadgets. I'm not going to go too in-depth in, depth in uh, the secondary weapons here because I have actually covered that in a previous video and I'll link it in an annotation here so that if you guys want to go and check that out and uh, get my two cents on all of these weapons, then feel free to do so. But personally, most of the time I run with the Jadam bomb here. It's very hard to use and it is hard to pull off enemy kills. But if you can, it can be extremely devastating. Hydro rockets here are another really good choice. They can kill anything from infantry all the way to light armor and heavy armor. So they're really good. Heat seekers, I don't really see the point because the chain cannons on this baby are so powerful. You just do not need heat seekers at all. Laser guided here, the starting weapon and uh, probably the weakest of the bunch. TV missiles are quite fun to use, but they really leave you open to enemy attack as they make your jet slow down to around a speed of 100 while you're actually firing them. So you're going to get an enemy attack jet sort of uh, coming up behind you and taking you out. So on to some more defensive things here, I'm going to tell you right off the bat that my favourite countermeasure is the ECM jammer. I've played around with all three of these a lot in Battlefield 3 and for the most part they're all unchanged. If you're not aware, IR flares is something that you have to pop after you have actually been locked on and that will actually either lose the lock on or if the missile has been fired the missile will not hit you. ECM jammer you can fire actually or fire you can actually use it before you get locked at all and it will actually prevent any lock-ons. You can also use it once the missile has been fired and it will stop the missile from hitting you. There are of course exceptions in the case of active radar missiles. They can be pretty annoying and they're pretty much going to hit you whatever your countermeasure you choose to use. But one big reason that the ECM jammer is better than the flares is that it actually makes you disappear off the enemy air radar and this can be incredibly advantageous when you're in a dogfight or when you're trying to get on the tail of an enemy jet. The fire extinguisher here, not really the best countermeasure and I'll tell you guys why. Back in BF3, one Stinger or Igler would disable your jet so you had quite a lot of means to use the fire extinguisher and even then I still wouldn't use it over the ECM or even the flares for that matter. But now in BF4, you can take three, I think even four Iglers or Stingers without your jet being disabled. So for me, the fire extinguisher is pretty much next to useless. In fact, I can't really say that I've ever seen anybody using it ever. Going over to the upgrade slot here, I like to go with a stealth coating. And I would suggest for you guys to go with either stealth coating or gyro stabilizer. This will help you defend yourself a little bit more and uh, it will make you definitely less prone to dying. The belt feeder here will allow you to fire your main chain cannons much more often but it's really not going to give you that much of an advantage. You can take out a tank 
in one flyby as it is in the current without the belt feeder so it's really not necessary the proximity scan will show you some infantry and tanks in the surrounding area but you're going to be moving so fast you're really not going to get much chance to see much of the minimap at all so why go for stealth coating over the gyro stabilizer well the gyro stabilizer will effectively help you stabilize after you get a mobility hit but i can tell you guys that stabilizing in the jet after a mobility hit is no problem at all i can assure you i can teach you guys how to do that in fact it's something i'm planning to include in the next video that i do on jets and uh, having stealth coating is just simply going to be much more beneficial to you it's going to give you a much wider warning time before you get hit by an enemy missile all right guys so that's about going to do it for this episode for jet tutorials today i hope these tips help you guys out there and it cleared up uh, some of those questions that you guys were asking me about. If you're an intermediate pilot, this video probably hasn't really been for you. This has been aimed at beginners as uh, I find that the majority of players at the moment in BF4 are really beginners. They haven't set foot in the jets before and uh, maybe a lot of these things... Um, they sort of just don't really realize them so I'm just trying to help out with that next episode we're going to be looking at essentially taking off a few ways that you can stay alive because uh, a lot of you guys have been telling me that the problem is that you get in the jet and you die straight away you get hit by um, a missile you get locked on and you die so uh, before we actually start taking out enemy vehicles we're actually going to talk a little bit about how you can best survive in the jets so I hope you guys learned something today. If you did, maybe you can do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for all your support. You're all awesome. Cheers, and I'll see you guys in the next one.